this is going to be yet another brain drain that's going to have a detrimental effect upon the country. So today I have Winston to my right. He's going to introduce himself and um, we're going to get into a really interesting interview today. So, thanks, Sam. So, um, my name's Winston and um, unlike, I suppose, many of the um, people that you have interviewed, I, well, some of them, should I say, I don't have a direct contact or lineage from lineage from Ghana. My parents, okay. my parents were from Jamaica. All right. And um, I didn't know much about Africa as far as I'm concerned or, or Ghana per se. Right. I, I knew Africa and I knew Africa from what you saw on the TV coming from the UK. Mm -hmm. Everything that's from um, what you see on the, in, in the UK, that's how I thought. And Africa was just a country yeah. to me. And yeah. it's all that things. And I was back in there where in the, born in the 60s and where um, you talk about anything African, it was all negative and going to school, the biggest insult you could insult somebody was, ah, oh, you're African, and that was just the biggest, yeah. the biggest cost you could call somebody. It was, just wasn't cool back then. It just wasn't cool, it wasn't then. Um, and so, I didn't know much, and um, I'm a teacher by profession. Okay. And um, I've gone through the ranks of being um, a teacher, an advanced skills teacher, which means I teach teachers how to teach, an assistant head, and um, I was training teachers. And what happened is that, um, I had teachers from Africa, different parts, didn't mean anything to me, just from Africa. Right. And then I developed my own recruitment company and I was recruiting teachers from Jamaica to go to the UK. Right. And one of the um, people I recruited, they phoned me up today, phoned me up one day and says, look, have you ever thought about getting teachers from Ghana? Didn't mean anything to me. And I says, why? He goes, well, teachers in Ghana, they follow, a lot of them follow the British system and they are some of the strongest teachers um, in Africa. Okay. Okay. And for, he says that, he says, don't tell Betty, Betty's, Betty's Ghanaian. He says, don't tell Betty, but when I was, um, Betty sat beside him and we're just, you know, playing the game. So, but <laughs> when I went to school, um, we had all my strongest teachers were, I went to boarding school and all my strongest teachers were Ghanaian. And they all came from Ghana and there's a period of the thing in the 90s mm -hmm. where all the teachers from Ghana went across to, to Nigeria, to, Nigeria yeah, yeah. To, to, to teach. And I thought about it. And then I looked back at some of the um, teachers who I had trained. Ghanaian. Ghanaian. And I thought, you might have something. Because the strongest ones that I had come across were Ghanaian. Right. Just were. And that was like in January 2020. Okay. January 2020. So Feb I organized to, did a post and got a load of teachers, um, Ghanaian teachers who wanted to, to be recruited to the UK. And um, I got something like 60, 70 to interview. I arrived here on Valentine's Day 2020. I interviewed 60, 66. And from that, I got 44 good teachers. Nice. Before I got back to the UK, schools were asking me, we want this person, we want this person, we want this person. That was um, February 2020. What happened in February, March 2020? COVID. That's right. <laughs> wow. Just at the no, beginning. Nobody wanted to take them off because all the teachers were going to, um, were just staying at home. Furloughed, yeah. Yeah. So, so no, one, no one wants, <laughs> now, now we don't want to, it's just a bill. Yeah. Why would we bring anyone over? And meanwhile, okay. I, I had flown myself out and two other people, oh, two other no. Ghanaians, whatever, and I thought, okay. Um, it's starting to recover, it's starting mm -hmm. to recover, but that's where it was. But when I arrived here, I got to the airport, and I must say, when I came out and stepped out, I almost wanted to cry. And I'm not a soft person, mm -hmm. not a soft person. I thought, wow. I've been sold lies all these years. And there's a sense of, there was a set, you know, in, in terms of what Africa was like. Yeah. Because I'd been through Heathrow Airport, and when I got to the one down in Accra, it looked better. Yeah. Sorry. Well, 2020, <laughs> yeah. It's better, it's better. Um, <laughs> so I couldn't believe it, you know, and um, that was me. And I, my parents were from Jamaica, and I used to go to Jamaica two, three times a year, see my parents or to recruit. Right. 
and there's something that I felt coming here in Africa, in Ghana, that I didn't feel in Jamaica, and that's despite living in there for a period of time. Really? There's an affinity that I have with here, you know, which, um, hey, see how it is, but I just felt that pulling here. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. 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 You know, okay, I mean, in, in the UK, I'm from Manchester. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Manchester, and I remember as a um, young person driving from Wally Range, where I lived in Manchester, up to Wilmslow, where my brother lived, and I got stopped five times in the 13 mile journey. Why? Why are you stopping for, you know, and, and while I'm here and, uh, you know, and it's like, they even says, oh, okay, so we're not expecting so many black people down. I'm thinking, oh, please. But when I get stopped here, I haven't been stopped here yet. Have I? Maybe once or twice. When I get stopped here in Jamaica, I'm not getting stopped because of the colour of my skin. That's yeah. one thing. They may yeah. want something else or something. Yeah. But because of, no, yeah. it's not happening. And that, that dynamic is yeah. just not there. It's a yeah. completely different dynamic. I hear you. Mm -hmm. So what was your plans? Did you did you think that you're coming in 2000 and that's it? I'm going to come and move over to No, Ghana? I only came over to make some money. I came over to recruit <laughs> my teachers. <laughs> recruit my teachers and um, come back. But um, then there were certain... Um, pull factors <laughs> let's leave it at that there were certain pull factors that pulled me to come back okay. and um, go and come and um, I'm spending majority let's say I'm spending the, let's put it this way I'm spending the majority of my time um, in, in Ghana so when was the moment you know what I could do this I always could because yep. yeah um, financially I was quite astute and put money aside and I was speaking before um, I never had the title of head of school or whatever but basically I went in schools and I was an advanced skills teacher and I was a mass consultant and I was I go in schools as a troubleshooter as also um, a commissioner teacher which is like a teacher that goes into the roughest schools the toughest schools right, right and helps turn them around so I could always do that and you had, had to pay me for that so with the schools that you were in were always turning into academies? Is that no? <laughs> it's, that not, it's, not even, it's not even that. Some of them, I'd go into a school, and uh, there's one school in um, Newham I went in, and for years the English results were something like 80, 90 percent. Okay. And the maths results were respectably 60 percent. And they said there shouldn't be that difference. So they gave me three years to go around and um, to turn that school or to turn the maths results oh, around. Oh, okay, I get you. Yeah. So I'd go in and I'd do it in a year. Then I'd sit down and I'd say, sometimes I'd go to them and I'd say, look, you know, they say to me, okay, you've got three years to do this. And I'd say to them, what are you going to do with me after I've done it in a year? And look, it's not going to happen. And I'd do it in a year. And sit down twiddling my thumbs and then I've got somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. So you'd have the school with the poor, relatively poor maths results. Right. Um, I'd go in and, so they've been doing that for years, getting them results. I'd go in and change it. And then the same people that presided over the rubbish before then became my bosses again. Yeah. I've gone, I'm not having that. Yeah, because... They didn't have the skills. They didn't have the skills to do it in the first right. place. I take right. it over, and then you become the expert. No, it's not happening. That that's been a lot of the history of of, of um, my 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 teaching. So, how long have you now been in Ghana? This so well, twenty twenty. But I go and come back. I go and come. Okay. Sometimes I'll go back to England and um, do bits. I'm over here. I'm doing some teacher to do teacher training. I okay. work with some schools over here. I'll go into some schools and. Um, there's certain things you can do, especially in some of the private schools, mm -hmm. which are just which you, which you call easy wins. Just go in and just change in certain things. In one in one classroom, I'd gone in, and just the position of the teacher's desk, or the teacher's desk is at the back of the class, and I'm saying, just walk in and say, look, if you move your desk from here to the front of the class, it's simple as that. Mm -hmm. You can literally see what's going on all the time because they're at the class at the class marking. And it's just in Ghana. It's in Ghana. Yeah. There's certain okay. things that can just change things around that are. Um, easy wins you know in I, th I think the training that we possibly get in the UK is very strong and ongoing you get a lot of ongoing training right not so sure how much training they actually get and um, the the commitment to the private schools you know okay. I'm not sure it's quite that quite in the way it could be and so teachers sometimes aren't delivering in the way that they could even though they're getting the results they get the results but their teaching and the children's <coughs> and the children's learning experience could be better mm -hmm. so going in there and just just doing little bits and turning things around it makes the experience better for the teacher it makes the experience better for the pupil as well
Excellent. And I and wanted to scratch you your brain about something that's quite current now. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was your business anyway. Mm -hmm. Right now, I've heard that England are uh, giving away bucket loads of cash to Ghanaian teachers. And you just, just literally don't even have to be qualified. I hear you can just sign up and there's £30,000 for you. <laughs> is that how it is? <laughs> I mean, it's not quite. There's, there's, there's a journey on this and, and we need to learn from, like I said, my parents are from Jamaica. So this is going to be yet another brain drain that's going to have a detrimental effect upon the country. Um, what they did in Jamaica, I call it aggressive recruiting. Mm -hmm. So I started to recruit my first person from Jamaica. Gosh, Richard, he was, must have been about nearly going on 15, 16, 17 years ago. And I would take little bits because Jamaica is an island. Um, the whole of Jamaica could, uh, could fit in that. The whole population of Jamaica could fit in Accra. It's right. only small. Yeah. You know, three point something million. Um, it's not a lot. So when a company goes over and recruits 300 teachers. That's a big percentage. That's a big chunk. And, and you, you see it on the website. We've recruited this many hundred teachers from, from um, Jamaica. And I just done the calculations because I already know how much you get in. I know much as a recruiter how much you get for each. And I look back and I say... 300. Yeah, 350. And that's not going to be the worst. No, it's not. There's other people going in there. And you, you've, you've, you've got... I'm not saying that teachers mustn't be recruited from there. But the question is, if you're doing that, what are you putting back into the country? to support that it can be it can be that you train the teachers to come across but if you're just going to be taking and taking it look at it you know you've got your place which 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 person has their land and says right i am going to plant um cocoa planting pineapple in my land and then they're going to allow somebody else to come and reap it and on the way out not even say, here's some from you. So, it, and and that's, that's basically what's happening. And I tell you what, me, the reason why I say like that is because whether it's Jamaica, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's Ghana, whether it's South Africa, these um, training teachers are going in and they're training to be teachers. In Ghana, I don't know what it might be. Say if it's 5,000 CDs to train per year, not a lot of money unless you've gone in and you've got to earn 5,000, then it's a lot of money. But by British standards, it's not a lot of money. But the rest of the money to train that teacher is coming from the government. The government is subsidizing the training of the teachers. And that's coming from the, 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 the people here. Mm -hmm. They're paying the money to the government, subsidizing them. And then once they've trained, where the UK and whatever is going to be saying, look, so I'll have you. Are you telling me that Ghana and the Ghanaian people mm -hmm. are training the teachers mm -hmm. and then England are coming and just saying thank you and not, is, not there, is, there, is there any money coming are we getting nothing, anything there's nothing, for the training there's, 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 there's nothing and that, that's, 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 that's the issue there'll be nothing for it so I come back and I've done I've, I, I recruit and I put, my, I put things back into the country I, I right. want to do my little, my little bit but, so, so a lot of a lot of people will say, "Oh, we've got a lot of teachers here, and they're not even in a classroom. They're driving Ubers, they're driving Yangos. There's other black brands are available. So why not let them go?" Because I'm not going to be coming and taking a Yango person. I'm not going to be coming and taking a Uber and the other van, other, <laughs> other, <laughs> other other brands branded, are available, <laughs> other branded <laughs> carriers. Yeah. I'm not. I'm going to Achimota. I'm going to Uganda International. I'm going to Mofanti's. Like Mofanti Pim? Have yeah, I said it right? Okay, yeah. I'm going to... Sorry, sorry, my... Uh, we're trying, we're trying, I'm okay. Trying, I'm trying, We're all trying, all. we're <laughs> small, trying. Small, small. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, we're trying. They're gonna, when I recruit, I'm not recruiting you worse. I'm recruiting your best. And that's what you mean by the people that will be coming in will True. be looking for the best. And what's... They're not even going to be coming. They're doing it. What, what the UK has done now is that says, right, okay, to teach in the UK, you have this gold standard called the QTS um, qualified teacher status and it was held up as one of the highest things in the um, virtually in the world to get that you have been qualified to the UK standard QTS and you had to go there to either do three four years as a, um, in a degree teaching 
or you'd had a degree, then you go and do a PGCE, um, postgrad certificate in education, to become a teacher. You've done all the training in terms of behavior, special education needs, um, pedagogy and practice, your discipline, um, how to run a school business, but all of those things that you've had. Mm -hmm. So you've got a rounded experience. Um, how to teach challenging behavior, Mm -hmm. how to teach gifted and talented pupils. You've had that, mm -hmm. right, that training. And so when you've got the QTS, that's it. So now what they're saying is that, okay, right, we're gonna look at your qualifications in, there's, I think there's nine countries, South Africa, Jamaica, Ghana, <coughs> Nigeria, some others, that they're looking at and says, right, what we're gonna do is we will look at your qualification that you've got and we will look at ours, what we want. And mm -hmm. um, if they line up, we'll give you the QTS, which means that you can come to the UK and teach. Right. Now, here's the big thing. Here's, here's the annoying thing. In 2021, I came over and I had a conversation with, um, let's say, let me just say for once, some people quite high up okay. over here in education. And um, the Minister for, this is, I can say this, the Minister of Education had um, a chat with, he, he went over to the UK and he had a yep. chat with the Minister for Education at the time in 2021 there. And they were talking and the Minister for Education um, in the UK was saying that, oh, struggling for teachers. And the Ghanaian one was saying, hey, we've got them driving taxis over here. So there's a conversation that they needed to have. And it's like, I can give you the reference later on if you want, where the um, Minister for Education over here says, look, they're going to have a conversation and they're going to be taking out, they're going to be, um, so we're going to be sending teachers over to the UK. And I went to them and says, listen, let's have a chat because I'm in the system, I fully understand it, and let's see how, it's a good thing to do, because like it says, if you've got these unemployed teachers and whatever, you know, why not? But let's do it so that Ghana can benefit from it. Right. Can it be done in a way so that so interactive whiteboards get put in classrooms? Can it be done in a way such that every teacher that we take, we train back one? Yeah. Now, in the UK, you think about a maths teacher, it will cost, the, if, if you was in the UK now, and you said you wanted to teach, train to be a maths teacher, they would pay you £26,000 mm -hmm. in your training year. It's not that you're paying the university, you're not paying the university to go, per se. They are paying you 26000 <coughs> Now, why not look and say, right, okay, instead of paying that 26000 let me take 4000 and invest it in training somebody in Ghana, not even 4,000, mm -hmm. not even three. Let's take 2,000 and put it into training something or put it into an institute, training institute inside Ghana that can make them put more teachers forward okay. and say, right, okay, look, we will take teachers that, we will take some of your, if you take 300 from your cohort, yeah. we'll take 100. So therefore, pupils from here would want to go to that university knowing mm -hmm. that once they're finished, if they work really, really well, they stand the chance of going to abroad. Nothing is wrong with it in principle. Nothing is wrong with it in principle. But it's the way I'm afraid it's going to be done that Ghana loses out. There was an opportunity for those ministers to say, well, look, we'll set the agenda how it was. And I had a chat with them, went no further. Now that opportunity is gone because it's just like UK is saying, right, okay, if you want, here, we're here, just put your applications in. It's not going to be that easy anyway. And a lot of all those people that have been driving those taxis or whatever, who's trained to be a teacher and then um, not been doing it for five, six years, just been yeah. driving taxi or doing their own little side business, they're going to apply spending money mm -hmm. to apply for this system that they're not going to get in because who wants someone who's not been in the classroom for five years? They haven't been at the it's goal in yeah. two, I keep on talking, sorry guys. Um, 2019, the um, British government DfE wrote a paper, I'll give you a reference to that again if you want it as well, um, where they says they want to raise 34 billion. I, th I had to read it again and again. They wanted to raise 34 billion per annum in teacher exports. That is through um, students coming from here to go to the UK, spending 9,000 pounds per year for education mm -hmm. in by doing the IGCSC courses right. by overseas training they were raising 34 billion that's their target per annum and to me elements of this Nigeria is a look it's got got 214 million people something like that in there mm -hmm. a lot of them are going to be applying for this and many of them aren't going to get through right so what I'm looking to do is have um, a um, 
discussion, a Zoom conference at some stage, where I can let people know what their chances are of right. getting it. Because not everybody who applies is going to get through. Is there any point at which Ghana can benefit at all from this now? Because it just seems to me, through everything you said, that Ghana is allowing the UK to cherry pick the best teachers in Ghana, take them, and Ghana has paid for these people to be educated, and there's, we lose. We just lose you, teachers. You, 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 you can put it on the flip side, I suppose. You, you know, th th there's nothing that they, they can do there. There's an opportunity to have the discussion before it got to this stage. Right. Right. But now you, you, you can say, well, you know, people can leave from um, UK and come to Ghana to teach. It, it's the same thing. It's just like free. You know, mm -hmm. it's free. free it's, what's, what's, what, what, the arrow that points that way can also point that way as well. But you've got to look at um, where Ghana is in terms of its development and where the UK is and the impact it's going to have on it. I know, and I'm saying five years, five years, watch this, watch this video again in five years and see the impact it is having upon the Ghanaian industry, Ghanaian um, teaching. I know it happened in Jamaica because, um, I, 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 and again, I had to read it. After them brain draining the country, in one year, they, um, the, Passes for G for the equivalent of GCSE. Um, what is GCSE? Is your junior high? Mm -hmm. You know, um, those that got English and um, maths. It was thirty five percent, thirty four percent of the pupils that took the exam. exam. Not thirty four percent of the whole population, because some of them live in rural country, rural areas, and may not have stayed on. Mm -hmm. But of the pupils that sat it, thirty four percent got the English and maths. Wow. Wow. And that's the future generation. And that's what's going to happen to here. So if you could sum it up, what would you say to the teachers? How, how would you navigate this system? Because it feels like not really many people know about this. Um, I'd say um, I'll, I'm going to put something out. You know, may come through yourself in terms of even if it's a, even if it's a, um, a Zoom meeting or whatever, where people can begin to understand it. Stop from Ghana, it's Nigeria as well. Where if you think to yourself that, okay, all I've got to do is match my qualifications with an English qualification, therefore I'll be um, I'll be able to go. Fifty-eight years old, um, and I've got the qualifications, and I've been teaching for twenty-eight years, and my qualification is the same as the one in the UK. I can get my QTS. Are they going to employ you in the UK? Um, well, on the face of it, and how we speak, and like we was talking about um, code switching, of course the chances is there. It's open to you because it's open for everybody. But fifty-eight, you might be retiring at sixty. You've gone in. You've gone with a pension. You go to school. You get your pension, and. Um, the school will need to pay that pension for the rest of your life. Who's going? Right. I, I, I wouldn't. Be, it's called on cost. I wouldn't, as a head teacher, go and employ somebody. I'm sorry. Take them on, and then have to the, pay them. And they're, they're, they're not. It's not as if you're moving. You know, no, this, this is controversial. You know, you're running a business. I'm not going to. Not, not, let me rephrase it. I'm going to think hard about the teacher that I read, that I employ, that's near the end of their career because that on cost is going to be from my school's budget. Mm. It's, it's facts of life. It's facts of life. I'm not going to get 10 years. I'm going to come, I'm going to be paying to train them and whatever, and I'm not going to get 10, five, eight <coughs> years of, of, of service from these, from these teachers. Right. You know, there's, there's so many different things. So you've got to be careful what you are doing. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing is that I've, I've had quite a few um, single mothers who have, who have said to me, right, can I go, can I bring my child? And the answer to that is, of course you can. You can sign it and fill it up, but okay, let's go to the UK, all right, on your 30,000 salary. You've got to get a house and you've got to, you've got to, you can't get a room because you've got a one-year-old child or mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get a single room. I want a single room in London. Now, mm -hmm. I think minimum is, no, that's with a state. What is it now? Eight hundred pounds a month. You ain't getting eight hundred pounds a room. Is a room a is six seven hundred. No, oh, no, no, house, no. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Who's who's going to give you a shared? I'm sorry. If I've got a shared, if you're a teacher as well, you want to get your own place. Yeah, your only place, but but it's it's not. It's going to be difficult. It's a bit difficult, I think, if you're um, if you're a single parent and you've got a, a one year old and they you know to, in a, in a shared house. Uh, 
I'm not. I, it doesn't I, seem to make sense because you've got to prep the lessons and yeah, then you've got, you've got, prep, got, you got prep, and but, but the landlords, will they want really you and a single child in there? Maybe. Maybe a bit more difficult. You actually do need a room. So you're going to be spending 11, 12, 1300 pounds oh, yeah. for that. And then if you're a single parent, then you're going to be paying your childcare. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 1200 pounds. By the time you've got no salary. So can you go and can you apply? Yes. There's a whole load of things that need to be taught as well, you know, um, that when you go to the UK as a teacher, so you've got your QTS, you go there and um, you spend the first two days in a, in a hotel and you say, right, I'm going to go get a room. You go and get your room. Well, you need a bank account because they're not allowed to give you unless you've got. So you go to, you spend the day in the hotel again. The next day you go to the bank, right, okay, I want to join the bank. Um, here's my documents, here's my papers. Um, and the question they're asking is, where's your address? So you can't get a bank account because you've not got a stable address. And you can't get a stable address because you've got a bank account. These are some of the difficulties that you'll face. And so to, to, you know, to recruit the teachers like this and not prepare them for it, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade. And I'm saying it's a, it, has its, it has its good side to it. But if you're not going to prepare them, mm -hmm. you bring them across and it's um, a recipe for... Mild recipe for disaster. My final question on this is, from my experience, the classroom experience as a teacher in the UK and in Ghana are uh, different worlds. So are they going to be prepared for, how do you prepare someone for the UK classroom environment? And, that, and that, that's something which I, like I said, I'm a recruiter and that's what I do because I know it's done and we've been seeing this from, we've learned from, um, from Jamaica. Just the way a gone in teacher may be teaching you know um the, the, you might be in a class and all of a sudden you know in the uk and if, if, if you're in ghana and um you know some child starts out first last last and everybody go chop breakfast right it's not going to necessarily happen in the classroom out like that but that might happen in the british school and then you as a Ghanaian teacher say what are you doing you go i'm singing burner boy now, the fact that the child has answered you back and given you the... Because the teacher, as a teacher, you're not asking really, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You don't want that back. You really know what you're doing. <laughs> it's, it's like, stop what you're doing. It's not, what, you can't even ask why. Why are you doing this? Because if you ask them the question why, they're going to tell you. Because I went to the concert yesterday and it's going to infuriate you because the whole class is going to start laughing and you become a laughing stock and you're not used to being a laughing stock like that. There's certain kind of levels of training which needs to happen and like I said, through the agency which I run, yep. we do that and let them know. If you are gonna take the take the teacher from here, place them inside a classroom, and you're not gonna place them in the you're not gonna place them necessarily in um, the best schools. You're gonna be placing them in some of them where they're challenging, where no teacher wants to wants 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 to be. The other thing that I think needs to happen is that even though I'm saying that a lot of this has to do with um, elements of raising money for the UK. I think the intake of teachers for this year is down by 50%. And it's which been going well. down for a number of years, yeah, is it Yeah, because it's not easy. It's not easy. So um, there's a lot that can be done. Okay. I think there's a lot that can be done. I'm not saying that, I'm not you know, trying to be the prophet of doom or whatever. There's a lot of, that can be done to make this right, but I don't think it's been done. I've spoken to the um, commissioner um, for her, the person who's supposed to be liaising with England and UK. I've been trying to get hold of her for some time to discuss this, but hey, you'll only find out when it's hitting you hard and then you'll start saying, right. always me. So you're still into training teachers yes. to, for overseas positions? Yes. Um, how can they come, how can they benefit from coming through you and um do you want to leave your details yes. so um you can email me on winston.ellis at wreeducation.com and, and we will leave this description in the link <laughs> yeah we'll Sorry. leave it in the box below yeah um, we will and um i'll leave my email as well and i do think one of the things i will be doing is offering training do not necessarily um just pick up yourself and say i'm going just because you've got the qts doesn't mean that you're going to get there number one the whole thing in terms of even even how to write your letter of application it's different i have placed teachers in um in dubai placed them in dubai placed them in the uk and there's not one of them that has come through and I'm not have to say right, okay, restructure. Even giving them as much guidance, in, because my when you apply to join my, um, to join the agency, I give you a lot of guidance with it. But 
even still I've had to take it and help mm -hmm. and, and run sessions in terms of this is how you write it, this is what <coughs> I want, because they're just not used to it. It's not right. it's not what it's not as if they can't do it, it's just not what you're used to yeah. doing over here. You don't use you don't do that over here. Right. You get posted to a school. Right. Whereas in the UK you have to write and explain why you're the best teacher for this particular post and sell yourself. In Ghana, um, you're not supposed to go there and show off and say, I am this, I am. Yeah. Whereas in terms of writing the application for the UK, that's specifically what you are doing. You are Let saying, you know, look, what, yeah, you what, you, what, you, what do you bring to the table? Yeah. And that's a skill that you may not have done because your culture doesn't allow you to do that. Okay. Not doesn't allow, it doesn't promote okay. that. Okay, that was a lot to <laughs> take in. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, still happy that you're here and enjoying yourself in me Ghana. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to come and see the, uh, the build. Mm -hmm. And um, guys, what do you think? Leave your comments in the section. Is Ghana on the brink of losing its youngest and finest teachers? Should they be allowed to get away with this? Are we the ones, it'll be simply, is it simply natural and people must eat and they must go where they, they're appreciated and where they can get their money? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down in on the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, the share button, and especially that subscribe button in three, two, one. We welcome to the family and we will definitely see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.